<clears throat> what happened to Captain Joel last night too? Crazy. All praises. <laughs> <clears throat> oh yeah and and to and to i got a reminder sister ahalaya from atlanta she did ask to make brothers some food she did she did i'll deal with that later but yeah sister ahalaya shalom sister i saw you i saw the message I saw the message so the brothers working at the school, the sister was forward thinking in trying to get them some food. So <clears throat> all praise to Mosai for sisters that are forward thinking. Um. Okay, with Ali. Okay, so the temple was pure gold. Okay, yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, yeah. So um. Let's see. Okay. All right. We're back. Um no no, no it wasn't King King Solomon. Uh was that was that Jared? Mm -hmm. Yeah, King Solomon, <clears throat> of course, was the uh what do you call it? The uh the uh, supervisor to make sure that everything was executed exactly like the Lord said. Okay exactly like the Lord said. Um, read verse 22 again, 1 Kings 6 and 22. First uh, Kings chapter 6 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. And the whole house he overlaid with gold mm -hmm. until he had finished all the house. Mm -hmm. Also the whole altar that was by the oracle he overlaid with gold. Mm -hmm. And within the oracle he made two cherubims mm -hmm of olive tree mm -hmm. each 10 cubits high and five cubits was the one wing of the cherub mm -hmm. and five cubits the other wing of the cherub from the uttermost part of the one wing until the uttermost uttermost See, part you got to think about this there were two huge angels that's what a cherub is right and their wings touched that's some bad stuff, man. That's some bad, bad, bad stuff. Go ahead. And the and the other cherub was ten cubits. Both the cherubim, both the cherub were of one measure and of and one size. So now you gotta think about it. They made two different cherub cherubims with their wings touching, but they're exactly the same size. This is some. This is some master craftsmanship because, you know, you might have one with a wing, you know, a little lower than the other. A brother was tired. He didn't, you know, measure it right. This is some, and there was, there's, remember, there's no bulldozers. There's no cranes, none of that stuff. So I want you to think about the work and labor that our, 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 our brothers put in, our sisters put in to make these this temple as beautiful as it is, just like today, just like today. Go ahead. The height of the one cherub was 10 cubits, mm -hmm. and so was it of the other cherub. And he set the cherubims within the inner house, and they stretched forth the wings of the cherubims, so that the wing of the one touched the one wall, and the wing of the other cherub touched the other wall. And there were 27. Oh, okay. I'm tripping. Go ahead. And their wings touch one another in the midst of the house. So now, they went, they were so big, it was from wall to wall 
until where their wings touched. Right? Go ahead. I think in Chronicles it says that they actually held up the ceiling too. But go ahead. And he overlaid the cherubims with gold. So you got in one section of of the house you have these two huge angels that are made of gold i, I really i really really hope brothers and sisters are wrapping their minds around this this is some beautiful stuff to the point where it has to be heavenly sent <laughs> like it says in the book of Solomon 9 and 8 god says listen you're making it exactly as a resemblance to the temple that's up here with me. <laughs> oh, man. Read verse 29. Go ahead. Verse, 20, verse 29. And he carved walls of the house round about with carved figures of cherubim mm. and palm trees. Now, this, 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 let me show you something. Let me show you how some of a lot of our people don't read. Because a lot of times when they, people pass us on the street and we're teaching and they see the image of Christ, what's the one thing they say? You can't make images. Aren't we reading about all the images that Solomon made in the temple? That's the direct resemblance of the temple that's with the Lord. So, so you're saying the Lord is in sin for making those images that had those images in the temple that we're going to get. And he was in sin for telling Solomon to make them in the temple on earth. Listen, don't be simple your whole life, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. Right, 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 right. If you want to hide something from a Negro, put it in a book. And it's so funny how all our people know that saying, too. When you ask them on the street, if you want to hide something from a Negro, where you put it? Was it in a book? And you still don't read. I tell you. Go ahead, read. Ver and palm trees and open flowers within mm -hmm. and without. So now on the inner part and the outer part of the temple, right? It says they were open flowers. They was they was they was designed like today we see all these shows on HDTV where you have these designers go in and do the no, we're reading about the author of beauty right here. The most high is the author of beauty. He knows how to beautify his house. He said, Listen. Put beautiful palm trees on there. Put beautiful open flowers on there. Overlay them with gold. He said that thing gonna be bad. But we go crazy when they when they when they on the on the shows they redesign a house and we're like, man, that's beautiful. It's garbage compared to what the Most High has ordained Solomon to do, and what he's gonna give us in that day. Go to give you that Wisdom of Solomon chapter three. We gonna come back here. Is it three? Who's my Solomon? The author of beauty. Oh, 13. 13. We had a three in there somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. With whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods, mm -hmm. let them know how much better the Lord of them is. Mm -hmm. For the first author of beauty hath created them. So all the things upon earth that you may deem as beautiful all the acts of the world. You might see lightning and say, oh, that's beautiful. This is what he said. He said, what happens? A lot of brothers and sisters started to worship those things. But you never think about the creator who made those things. He is the first author of beauty. So as we're wrapping our mind around Solomon building the temple and how beautiful and majestic that thing is, think about the one who made the one in the heavens. Remember, Solomon got his blueprint from the Lord who's looking at the one in heaven like, yeah. Yeah, and do them cherubims down there, too. I like that thing. And make sure you put open flowers all in the walls and overlay them with gold. And put palm trees, too. I like those things. Make the wood, make put, put a special kind of wood on the floors and overlay that with gold. And do this and do that. God is the author of beauty. So we, in on earth, when Solomon made the temple, we marveled at the beauty of the temple. But that temple had a blueprint. And it's the temple that's in heaven with the Lord. I tell you. Go ahead. First Kings chapter six and verse 30. Mm -hmm. And the floors of the house he overlaid with gold mm -hmm. within and without. And for the entering of the oracle, 
He made doors of olive tree. Mm -hmm. The lentil and side posts mm -hmm. were a fifth part of the wall. Mm -hmm. The two doors also were of olive tree, and he carved upon them carvings of cherubim. So now in the doors, some of these doors that you can purchase for your house are thousands of dollars, right? But listen, you, you got to remember how detailed the Lord is. The Lord wants them a certain size. He wants them out of certain wood. He wants the carving a certain way. So I'm talking about he's given Solomon one of a kind instructions. These are not made on an assembly line. These are not made out of out of fiberglass or some little feigned uh, material. These are made out of the finest wood on the planet, carved by the finest craftsmen. Go ahead. Up, I'm verse 32. 32 yeah. The two doors also were of olive tree, and he carved upon them carvings of cherubims and palm trees and open flowers and overlaid them with gold mm -hmm. and spread gold upon the cherubim and, Go ahead. and upon the palm trees. So the palm trees were laid in gold. The, the, the designs that they were making were also laid in gold. Go ahead. So also mm -hmm. made he for the door of the temple posts of olive tree, mm -hmm. a fourth part of the wall. Jump down to verse 38. Verse 38. And in the eleventh year, in the month bull, which is the eighth month, was the house finished throughout all the part thereof. Mm -hmm. And according to all the fashion of it, so was he seven years in building it. So the temple took seven years to build. Right now, Esau builds a strip mall in five months. <laughs> This took seven years. Why is that? You see the intricacies of detail that had to go into this? And remember, it's being, it just says in the oracle. So the Lord is giving him his word on how it should be made. Because the Lord designed the one in heaven. I want y'all to see that. The Lord designed the one in heaven. So he's like, listen, make sure the cherubims is uh, this amount of cubits. Make sure his wingspan is this amount. Why did the Lord give him such detail? Because the Lord did the one in heaven. The one that's coming down in Revelation chapter 21, the Lord made it from the very beginning. So he knows exactly how he wants it. This is why I always say the Lord is where we're living the greatest movie ever made. Okay? The Lord is the writer the director, the, the casting agent to do is play our part. So remember, we would have had all that glory to behold even to this very day if we had only kept the commandments. So now, real quick, we've got to speed up. Ezekiel 11 and 16. Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Therefore say, Thus said the Lord God, mm -hmm. although I have cast them afar off among the heathen, mm -hmm. and although I have scattered them among the countries, mm -hmm. yet will I be to them. Yeah, said, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, Ezekiel 11. Go ahead. Yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary mm -hmm. in the countries where they shall come. So now in the countries where they shall come, because now what is this talking about? This is after the scattering process. After we have broken the commandments of God. Now he says, listen, I'm going to scatter y'all. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to allow y'all to have me as a little sanctuary. Meaning the places that you now can fellowship in, can serve me in, so on and so forth, is not going to be the glory of what King Solomon built. Because what? That's going to be trotted down. Give me, um. let's go to First Ezra. First Ezra chapter four and verse forty-five. First Ezra chapter four and verse forty-five. Mm -hmm. Thou also hast vowed to build up, up the temple 
which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. Ch the Chaldeans are like the rulers of Babylon. The, child, the rulers gave the orders to destroy the temple, to burn the city. So also the Edomites, which the sister asked about earlier in class, the Edomites had a part to play in the destroying of Jerusalem as well. Now, Ezekiel, when he said that we will be a little sanctuary, it was during the time of the Babylonians we were being destroyed. Okay, so now the next captivity, which is the Persians, um, Ezra was going to rebuild the temple that was destroyed by the Babylonians during Ezekiel's time. So Ezekiel, the Lord gave it to Ezekiel. Ezekiel prophesied and said, listen, now that we're being scattered by who? the Babylonians, and he knew there would be more to come, Persians, Greeks, so on and so forth. He said, we're being scattered. So while we're being scattered, the Lord is going to be a little sanctuary. So we will not have this glorious temple the way it was in the time of Solomon. Why is that? Even though um, Ezra rebuilt the temple, it was not to its former glory. Why? Because when the when the heathens um, go into our temples, they take things with them. They take, they'll take cherubim, they'll take those doors off. Because when we, we as we, I don't know if I'll get into it today, but when we read, Nehemiah re rebuilt the doors and the gates. Why? Because they stole the doors. They took the doors. The doors were the best wood. The doors had the best carvings. They, so that's why Nehemiah had to rebuild the doors. And he, what is he doing? He's going back to what's written and saying, okay, the Lord wants it like this. We're going to do the doors and design them the way the Lord wrote it when he gave it to Solomon. They always use the word of God as their blueprint because the Lord gave the instructions on how to build it to Solomon. Solomon is long gone. But what did he have? He had the, the oracles that Solomon left in order to have a blueprint to go by. Hope y'all, I hope y'all understand. I'm doing this for time, speeding up for time's sake. Okay. So back to Ezekiel 11 real quick. Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse, therefore say, thus said the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, mm -hmm. and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary. Yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary. Go ahead. And the countries where they shall come. In the countries where we shall come. So now that's what we have today. What we're building is only a little sanctuary, a little place of refuge, a little place of worship in comparison to what Solomon built. I hope you understand that. And the reason why is little sanctuaries now is because of the sins of our people. What it all boils back down to is the sins of our people. So when I mentioned about the counseling, when I mentioned about us doing what the Lord said, it has a, a, a grave effect on the generations to come. This is what we don't understand. It has a grave effect on the generations to come. Now, all praise to the Most High, he's allowing IUIC and other camps to build little sanctuaries, to have a place of worship, to have somewhere to go to fellowship and keep his Sabbath days, keep his new moons, his feast days. Now the Lord is saying, okay, these these brothers, these sisters, and IUIC, they keeping the commandments. Okay, I'm gonna allow that increase. I'm gonna allow that increase. I'm gonna mm -hmm. allow place of worship for brothers and for my children to go in, like in Acts, where it says that of uh, three thousand repented in one day. So if they repent one day, where they gonna go? Where they, where are they gonna go? All praises for little sanctuaries for brothers and sisters to come in. Learn how to be better servants unto God. Luke 14, 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in uh -huh. that my house may be filled. So now, wait a minute. So... Shortly thereafter, the Jerusalem was destroyed. But remember what Ezra, or excuse me, Ezekiel prophesied. There'll be little sanctuaries and all the countries were scattered. So once we were scattered a little bit after this, after Christ, um, what was going to happen was brothers and sisters will start having 
places to worship, places to worship so that we can serve the one true God again. Right. Because the Lord says, go out to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. So there must be somewhere for them to come in. There has to be. Right. But that place does not pop out of thin air. It doesn't pop out of thin air. Um, I, I do have a lot more to go over, but. Ezra, Ezra chapter three. Try to speak through it. Verse two. Ezra chapter three and verse two. The son of Jos Josedek mm -hmm. and his brethren, the priest, and Zerubbabel, the son of she Sheatiel. Mm -hmm and his brethren and build it the altar of the God of Israel mm -hmm. to offer burnt offerings thereon as it was as it is written in the law of Moses the man of God jump up to verse 8 now verse 8 now in the second year of their coming unto the house of God at Jerusalem in the second month began Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel mm -hmm. And Jeshua, the son of Look, Joseph. I, I can help you with that one, bro. You on your own. <laughs> and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity of Jer unto Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forth the work of the house of the Lord. So he said the Levites are going to be the ones because I, as I mentioned, Solomon was the one kind of giving the instructions according to the law. Ezra says the Levites are going to be the ones to instruct us how to build the, the temple back up. Go ahead. Verse 9. Then stood Jeshua with his sons and his brethren, Cadmiel and his sons, the sons of Judah, mm -hmm. together to set forward the workmen in the house of God, the sons of Hinnadad, with their sons mm -hmm. and their brethren, the Levites. Mm -hmm. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priest in their apparel mm -hmm. with trumpets mm -hmm. and the Levites, the sons of Asaph with symbols to praise the Lord after the ordinance of the, of David, King of Israel. So now, so the Levites were over setting forth the builders. Then they were also uh, in charge of the music. OK, so they made sure that the Lord's house had had music and, and it was joyful, just like just like today. Same thing. Go ahead. And they sang together by the, by course mm -hmm. and praising and giving thanks unto the Lord mm -hmm. because he is good mm -hmm. for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. The Lord's mercy endureth forever toward Israel. So merciful that today we have little sanctuaries to worship the Lord and be joyful in. So every single one of us should be in the mindset of giving thanks to the Lord for our little sanctuary. Because we we could be those vagabonds in the earth not knowing who we are and or still up in those Christian churches banging tambourines, don't know what you're even singing for. And a lot of it is not even biblical. But now we know the Lord's mercy. He's allowed increase. Most of the most of the, mostly all the congregation are growing. Brothers and sisters are waking up. I didn't see it, but somebody told me that um uh, Officer Moshe when I was with him yesterday. Oh yeah, because Atlanta, we already got our feast tabernacles 2019 rolling. I'm just saying. Just saying. I don't know if I want to go touch on that, but might have to touch, might have to touch on that. These Tabernacles 2019 Atlanta is already in motion, man. A year out. That's how we got it. That's how we roll in Atlanta, man. A year out. But anyway. Uh so um, yeah, he told me yesterday while we were out uh handling some some stuff, getting venues squared away. He said that Kanye West was doing a freestyle in um in uh Uganda, and he was rhyming how you from the tribe of Judah. I didn't, he sent it to me, but I didn't watch it. It was like seven minutes long. I didn't have time to watch it. 
But I'm just going by what he said. He said he he's wrong about being an Israelite and he said he's from the tribe of Judah. So I'm going to watch it. Might go over it on Patient Saints. But ultimately, that same thing happened with Lamar Odom with, with that Kardashian chick. What happened was Lamar Odom wore the Revelation 114 shirt after that. And he, he paparazzi took pictures of him in Christ, a black image of Christ with red eyes. And it said Revelation 114 on it, on the back of his jacket. And ever since then, they tried to paint, paint him as crazy. They were drugging him up. You could, you could type, you could, you could uh, Google it. Lamar Odom, uh, just type in a black Jesus shirt or something like that. He had the T-shirt on and the back of his leather jacket had Christ with dark skin with white woolly hair drawn on his jacket revelation 114 then he painted him crazy now if moshe was accurate now moshe might have been looking stupid if it's not accurate he's he said the video kanye rhymed and he said he he's a woke tribe of judah now look how they got kanye looking crazy but kanye said himself they have him doped up and he's always on medication he said it himself i saw that interview he did a he did a uh, i think it was a facebook live on his phone and he was like, yo, he's highly medicated all the time. I'm just saying. I don't know why I went there, but I thought it was very important at the time. Sam's getting the more you can buy a song with him saying he's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you you can't buy the song. We say he's an Israelite. Damn. All uh, right, you know what, Israel? I'm sorry. I'm gonna end it there. I'm gonna end it there. Because I have a lot more to go and Last scripture, 1 Timothy 3.15. So right now we have little sanctuaries. We were going to, in Ezra, we were going to go into everybody, and, and Nehemiah as well, Nehemiah 4. Everyone had a mind to work, to work together, okay? Everybody had the same mindset. We had to build, we had to protect each other, we had to eat, so on and so forth, right? That's what I was going to go into. But this is what it ultimately boils down to. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. We mentioned first the commandments, right? That's what it boils down to now this. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. but, I, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou ought, oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. So now, now that you have little sanctuaries, the main thing is to know how to behave yourself in the house of God. You must know how to behave yourself, meaning stay out of sin. That's what it boils down to. So though the Lord has allowed us mercy in this day and given us little sanctuaries, we must know how to behave. OK, which means uh, none of that secret running around with each other, uh, 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 the little None of these, and a lot of what I see too, a lot of brothers and sisters, they'll have little events at their house and brothers and sisters get together. But then I hear reports of drunkardness. Um, then brothers and sisters uh, touch each other inappropriately. I just got word of that, some inappropriate stuff. Listen, it don't matter if you're in the sanctuary or not, you are, and that's why I read that earlier, you are a part of the congregation of the Lord. The congregation is Israel, okay? You should know how to act. Matter of fact, um, First Corinthians sixteen and nineteen. Because some of y'all think because this is a school O, and that's why a lot. Listen, that's why a lot of brothers and sisters stay out because they feel that this place or IUIC schools period is too strict for them. For them, and some of y'all choose to gather in the house. Listen, the same standard held held for you in the school is the same standard that should be held if y'all fellowship it in the house read that first corinthians chapter 16 and verse 19 Come on. the churches of asia salute you mm -hmm. aquila and priscilla salute you mm -hmm. much in the lord mm -hmm. with the church that is in their house there's, a, there's brothers and sisters who have let's say you're in a city and it's about five families we started in the house we started in captain amaziah's house and it was like it was like four families, six, five families, and like three brothers, three single brothers. And we started in his house. 
but we still had to hold each other accountable mm -hmm. just like now in the school it's the same process so there's a church in the house right now go back to first timothy 3 15. first timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. but if i tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of god so now you're supposed to know how to behave yourself because regardless if it's because this because this is not the temple so it's not talking about that house it's wherever the congregation of israel are gathered that's where we are real quick um matthew 18 and 20. you ought to know how to behave yourself in the house of god and sometime that's in someone's house right read that matthew chapter 18 and verse 20 mm -hmm. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, mm -hmm. there am I in the midst of them. Now we've heard we've heard this a ton of times. Where two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord, it says the Lord is in the midst of that. So if it's in someone's house, go to verse eleven. Verse eleven. Uh -huh. For the Son of Man is come to save that which is which was lost. So now the Son of Man is only talking to those that are lost, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, as it says in Matthew chapter 15. That's who he's talking to. So where two or three of that group of people are gathered, it says the Lord is in the midst of it. Those that are to gather together, keeping the commandments rather. The Lord is in the midst of it. So you have to, if you if two or three of y'all gather, guess what? You have to know how to behave yourself. That goes into the, the building up of the sanctuary, which actually is going into building up of the, the nation. So you just because you're not in a physical school doesn't mean you could be in gathering some whoremonger, sleeping with all the women in the house. Like, what the hell? Because you're in someone's house doesn't negate you from keeping the commandments there as well. Wherever two or three is, y'all better be keeping the commandments together. All right. So I hope the class was edifying. Brothers and sisters learned something. Um, sis says she will be in the building. All praises, all praises. Germany. That's what happened to him. What are you talking about? What was his name happened to somebody? I don't remember. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you talking about Kanye and Lamar Odom? Yeah. As soon as that daggone picture aired, I kid you not, it was like the next week, Lamar Odom all of a sudden was supposedly on drugs. Meanwhile, they have videos of him a couple months before playing ball at a tournament, putting the ball through people's legs and getting crazy on them. All of a sudden, now he's crazy? Like, come on. Come on. Listen, we, 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 you saw, you saw the Kanye video. Okay, okay. Yeah, they dope him up. Yep. Yep. Officer A said, "Say one break bread with you, bro. Say you look hungry. You heard your stomach growling. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> praise." Yeah, and you know what? Those brothers, just like a lot of congregations, they know they're Israel, but they can't climb out of that sunken place because they have a love for the heathen woman. And that's funny because I'm, I was even listening to a couple of Kanye things, you know, just a while back when this whole thing started happening. And I saw, I seen videos, and we went over it the other day, matter. We went over it the other day, Patient Saints, when Kanye said back when Katrina happened, how George Bush hate. Black people, they don't, they don't, and whites don't care about blacks. He said that on live TV. Like, but now, fast forward, he's now with the people who he claimed hate us. And he's, it's, it's, it's sad. But ultimately, it's their love of the other nations. That's what it is. Their love of the other nations got them looking nuts. And the scripture says that they'll be made a laughing stock. That's what the scripture says. They'll when you when you go into those 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 sins, the scripture says you'll be made a laughing stock among your enemies. So you know um, uh
can we have a part two, two to the kingdom? Lord's will, Lord's will. A lot will happen between now and next Monday, I'm sure. I'm sure. But we'll see. All right, Israel. I think um all praise to the most high. All praise. What is the full purpose of incense? What is the full purpose of incense? I think I think I saw because some some because sometimes I go back and read comments when I have time, but oftentimes I don't. But I think I think you had asked about incense before. Uh, Tobit chapter six verse seven. You have some. Revelation. You want to carry the smoke, carry the prayers? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll get that. So we'll do both of them. Six. six and seven. Tobit mm -hmm. chapter six and verse seven. And he said unto him, touching the heart and the liver, if a devil or an evil spirit trouble any, mm -hmm. we must make a smoke thereof. Make a what? Smoke thereof. So it's the, what it what it represents is the smoke. Here in Tobit, it was the gall of the fish, but the incense <clears throat> symbolized the same thing. It's the smoke thereof. Go ahead. Before the man or the woman, mm -hmm. and the party shall be no more vexed. So now, if an evil spirit is troubling somebody, that smoke helps to get that spirit off of them. The purpose of incense mm -hmm. is supposed to help get the smoke off of them. Now, give me that revelation. Revelations chapter eight and verse four, mm -hmm. and the smoke of the incense, the what? The smoke of the incense mm -hmm. which came with the prayers of the saints. It it did what? Came with the prayers of the saints. When you light incense, it actually goes up with the prayers. Damn, that's a hell of a purpose for incense to me. It's gonna help carry my prayers. All praise to the Most High. Hey Israel, all right. Um, all praise to the Most High. Um, I'll take it. Yes, light, light incense, light incense. Now it doesn't, it doesn't say that you have to burn it when you pray, but I know there's times when I have burned it when I pray. After I read that, mm -hmm. I started uh, I praying sometimes, not all the time. I pray while the incense are going. Sometimes when I light incense, I'll just send up some prayers because the scripture says that the prayers, oh yeah, that's the picture right there. Mm -hmm. The picture says that the prayers went up with the incense. So yeah, incense are very good. It helps get rid of spirits. I told you the other day, when I went home, my wife had incense lit. I said, what the hell? I, mean, I said, maybe I got a devil. That's what I, cause I said, and I, and I said it jokingly, maybe I got the devil on me because we know that smoke removes spirit she could have been doing it for herself or just getting spirits out the house but that's what the smoke does all right all right israel i hope that answered your questions lord's will see y'all next week lord's will i have some tabernacles updates for y'all what's well, gonna be exclusive first i'm gonna keep it in atlanta for a second you know but lord's will lord's will i'll release it to y'all but we definitely got to think about passover coming passover 28 2019 will be here in atlanta as well listen y'all ain't gonna listen Pray the Most High increase us to take on the workloads He's sending uh, Atlanta's way, as well as the neighboring schools. It's not just Atlanta. Don't. It's not. North Carolina helps a great deal. South Carolina, Alabama, Florida help a great deal, both in Passover and uh, with Tabernacles as well. So, all praises to the Most High for all those brothers and sisters. Atlanta Passover will be Passover night. I think it's April fourth. Passover night, but I don't know how long will be there but israel i pray all is well most high christ bless you all right, shalom bless. look now i won't sign off first they kicked me off and now I can't. <laughs> so he saw the devil man i tell you all right cool there it is <laughs>
What the hell?